So as I said, we go to Surah Tun Nisa, chapter 4, verse 157, and I'm going to read to 158, right? And they are saying, uh, they are saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah. Masiha is the Messiah, right? And when we start from above, so let's see, let's start from uh, 156. And for their disbelief and their sin of a terrible slander against Mary, right? The, book, the people who hated uh, Jesus and hated Miriam and hated everything about God decided to slander Miriam, right? Uh -huh. And for their disbelief, وَبِكُفْرِهِمْ وَكَوْلِهِمْ عَلَى مَرْيَمَ بُحْتَانًا عَزِيمًا so, and for their disbelief and their saying of a terrible slander against Maryam. 157. And they are saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of God, right? So it was the disbelievers, the kufr, the kufar, among those people, the children of Israel, who were the ones saying that they killed uh, the Messiah, right? Then God says, while they did not kill him, and now this misconception that people usually have, you still don't know the Quran is lying. How can the Bible say he killed him? And why is the Quran now saying, no, they didn't kill him? For instance, sometimes in life, let's say you have, uh, let's say this mobile phone. I'm, I'm supposed to go and drop it at the post office, right? Sometimes, uh, sometimes, this phone might be at home, but I might be thinking I went to drop it off already. So when a circumstance happened, then I will remember and say, wow, oh, I thought I posted this phone already. It's still here with me. You understand? Uh -huh. So with this concept, when God says, while they did not kill him, they claim they have killed him. And God says, while they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. But it was a resemblance. When we say shubbiha. It's like the shabaha, mutashabiha, something shabaha, something which is re a resemblance for you, right? So you can even have somebody who resembles Jesus and you are claiming that is Jesus. It's just like today, if you are looking for every celebrity's look alike, you will get. You can even get somebody who looks like Donald Trump. <laughs> so if you go and get the look alike of Donald Trump or look alike of Snoop Dogg or look alike of Michael Jackson and kill Michael Jackson. Does that mean you killed my, Michael Jackson himself? No. You understand? So you have to understand this concept, what God is saying. Don't put your own assumptions and desires there. So then he says, indeed, those who differed about it are in doubt thereof. They are in doubt who they actually killed. It's just a narrative. People say, we killed the Messiah, we killed the Messiah. They never killed him. You see the point? Now, so God says they have no knowledge about it. They only follow assumption. It is an assumption. People are actually taking it up. So people will say, oh, it is written in the New Testament. Remember, the New Testament you are reading, especially the Gospels, they are Gospels according to St. Luke, St. Matthew, St. Mark, and St. John. And even the book of Matthew itself, when you read, it tells you clearly Matthew was not the one who wrote it. Check Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 for yourself and see who wrote it, right? Uh -huh. So those books were not the Injil given to Isa, alayhi salam. The one God said he gave him. According to some Christians, they will quote Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19, that the Spirit of God is upon Jesus and has anointed him to preach the gospel. So where is the gospel Jesus preached? It is something that people, somebody else wrote and alleged and tell you that, oh, this is the book of God. God never revealed any book called New Testament. Let those who follow New Testament quote a verse for you in the Bible where it says God reveals something called New Testament. It doesn't exist. You see the point. Uh -huh. So these misconceptions that people are having, the verse, I'm going to address this point to clear out this misconception, to tell you that the death of Jesus was the one God actually took him away. How can somebody who, come by, who came by a spirit he didn't come by a natural type of birth. Who came by a spirit, you claim you will kill a spirit. How can you kill a spirit? Somebody who was given the, 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 uh, the, the permission to be able to raise up the dead, right? He is able to give life to a bird, to, to a clay, and he becomes a bird. And he is able to raise up the dead, somebody from the dead. And you claim you killed. How can you kill such a person who God has given the Holy Spirit together with him? 
how you understand good so let's move ahead so now this verse quran chapter 4 verse 157 says and they are saying indeed we have killed the messiah jesus the son of mary it was a slander so they have to find a way to find this excuse now remember it is the kufu it is not saying the christians did it it is not saying that the jews did it it's not saying anybody but it is the kufur among the children of israel so if you like you can start the context of the verse maybe from 100 and uh, maybe 50 downwards and you get the context of who it is talking about that is the children of israel concerning moses and his people and so on right so it goes ahead and god says for for they did not kill him certainly yakina when we say Yakin, it's something with certainty for sure they never killed him it was god who sent his messenger and he's telling you they never killed him why will you out of your stupidity still claiming because of a text has written something and you still claiming they killed him were you there no right so now verse 158 and god says in fact ah uh, he says bar rafa rafa ahu lahu ilayhi wa kana allahu azizan hakima God says, in fact, God raised him to him. He raised Jesus to him for God is almighty and wise. Remember, Jesus came by a spiritual birth. According to the Quran, chapter 66, verse 12. Right? Quran, chapter 66, verse 12. And also Quran, chapter 19, if you start reading from verse 16 to verse 21, he, he didn't come by a natural type of, uh, sorry, uh, the, the physical type of birth we, we see normally, that somebody, a man and a woman who copulates before giving birth, he didn't come in that way. He was a spirit blown into uh, his ma mother and then he was conceived, right? Uh -huh. So now God has to take him back. Somebody who didn't just come by a natural course, like the way we see the birth happening, it came in a miraculous way. You expect that such a soul, can you kill such a soul which was... Uh, uh what together with the holy spirit quran chapter 2 verse 253 sending the messengers and god spoke about that uh uh those messengers some of them we uh, because to exceed over others god favored them over others and among them were what there was the one god spoke to that is moses and he raised some of them in what ranks or degrees and we gave jesus the son of mary what evidences and supported him with the holy spirit so jesus was supported with the holy spirit so someone who has been supported with the holy spirit how can you a layman kill such a person how does it make sense can you kill a spirit how you see so i go back to the point chapter 4 verse 157 to 158 and he says in fact god raised him to him for God is almighty and wise. So we are going to see how that happened. How is God saying he raised him, but then somebody they killed was a resemblance for them. It wasn't actually Jesus they killed. So we are going to see the evidences based on what the Quran says. So now I take you to Quran chapter 3 verse 55. Let's see what is God is saying in that verse. Quran chapter 3 verse 55. And God says, then God said, oh, Jesus, indeed, I will cause you to die. That is mutawafika. In the Quran, when the word tawaf, mutawafa, is used, it is to cause death. Yes, it is to take the soul away. And I'll give you some examples. For instance, if you go to uh, Quran chapter 10, verse 46, God used a similar instance of word for the prophet Muhammad, alayhi salam. Where he says, So the word that is the similar word God used for Jesus by saying, right? And when the angel of death also comes to take your soul, it is the same word God used. Thumma ila rabbikum turja'un. So the word, yetawafa, mutawafa, natawafayyanaka is the same. Based on the context. So it is about taking a soul away. So God says in Quran chapter 10 verse 46 to Prophet Muhammad, even if we show you some of what we have promised them, or we cause you to die, meaning we take your soul away, then to us is their return then God will be a witness over what they do. 
Do you see how it goes? So when I take you back to Quran chapter 3 verse 55, when God told Isa, is call Allahu ya Isa inni mutawafika. Then he says, warafiuka. You see? Warafiuka ilayya. You see? So then God said, oh Jesus, indeed I will cause you to die. He will take his soul away and raise you to me. He didn't say, I will cause you to be killed. <laughs> I will let somebody kill you. Or I will let them crucify you. Or I will let them kill you. He says, I will cause you to die. That is, take the soul away. Remember, he came in a spirit form and he's living as a spirit form. Who, so who are you to say you are going to kill Jesus and bury him? <laughs> are you nuts? <laughs> so it's only a mushrik, a disbeliever, a kafir who is claiming they killed Jesus. Yes, and it doesn't make sense at all for you to even claim you kill somebody who 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 Holy Spirit is with him. How can you kill such a person? Does it make sense? Uh -huh. So then God said, "Oh Jesus, indeed I will cause you to die and raise you to me and purify you from those who disbelieve and will place those who followed you." Those who followed you doesn't mean the Christians. God never gave anybody a religion called Christianity. Jesus was not a Christian. His people were Ansarullah, those who supported God with him. Quran chapter 61 verse 14. You can check what he says. So I give you an example. Quran chapter 61 verse 14. The supporters of Jesus. This is what is said about them. Ya yuwal lazina amanu kunu ansarullahi kema kala isa binu mariyama lil hawariyina. Man ansari ilallah. Kala al-hawariyuna nanu ansarullah. These are the supporters of God. Right? Then he says, Fa'amanat ta'ifatun min bani Israela wa kafarat ta'ifat. So another group disbelieved and another group among the children of Israel, they believed. Those are not classified as Christians. Jesus never gave anybody a religion called Christianity. He only called the disciples to be what? Ansarullah, supporters of God. So from there, we got the word Nasara. Nasara means somebody, a partisan, a supporter, somebody who supports something. So it's from the enemies of Christianity, uh, the, the followers of Jesus, they started tagging them as Christians, Christians, Christ, because of Christ, the Messiah, right? The Messiah. So now... <clears throat> If I take you back to the context of what we are talking about, Quran chapter 3, verse 55, then God said, Oh Jesus, indeed I will cause you to die, mutawafika, and raise you to me and purify you from those who disbelieve, and will place those who followed you above those who disbelieve till the day of resurrection. It's not talking about Christians. Please, please think well. When we say Nasara or Ansarullah, it's talking about the supporters of God through Jesus. But it doesn't mean Christianity, just like the ones who worship Jesus and then worship idols concerning his mother, his Jesus, the Holy Spirit. No, not those ones. Those are idol worshippers. Then to me is your return and I will judge between you concerning what you have deferred in. Right? Whatever the people have deferred, then God will judge on the day of judgment. So this is why even if when you go to the book of, uh, uh, is it Matthew, uh, the Bible, it's, uh, I think chapter 7, or when Jesus said, not everybody who said to him, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the, only those who do the will of the Father above. Those are the ones who will enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus didn't come to do his own will, right? Mm -hmm. So now, uh, chapter 3, verse 55, tells you how God raised him. He took his soul away and raised him. He didn't say they killed him or anybody killed him. Right? Good. So now, again, then I give you the next verse, which is chapter 5, verse 116 to 118. Let's see what it says. Because usually people are misunderstanding the concept, saying that the Quran says Jesus will come back. It's a lie. Jesus is never, ever coming back. And I'm going to prove that to you. Jesus is never coming back. Nowhere did the Quran say he's coming back. And I'll come to that. That is why I'm here to clear the misconception away. Right? So take your time. Have your popcorn with you. And enjoy the show. Yeah? Yes. So Quran chapter 5. 
verse 116 to 100 and let's say 17 or 18 right so let's read and see and when god will say that is on the day of judgment listen what god will say what is called allah ya isa ibn maryam aa anta qulta lil nasi attakhuzuni wa ummiya ila hayn min dunillah and when god will say oh jesus son of mary did you say to the people take me and my mother as gods that is two gods besides god did you say that to them he jesus will say glory be to you he will say what subhanaka ma yakunu li an akula ma laysa li bihaqqin in kuntu qultuhu faqad alimtahu then he says ta'lamu ma fi nafsi wala alamu ma fi nafsik innaka anta allamul guyub so now jesus will say glory be to you it was not for me to have said what i have no right if i had said it you then you will have known it you god because he knows all you know what is in my soul but i do not know what is in yourself indeed you are the knower of all unseen and this will transpire on the day of judgment right so quran chapter 5 verse 117 then Jesus continued by saying, ah, ma kultu lahum illa ma amartani bihi. Anihbudu allaha rabbi wa rabbukum, rabbakum. Wa kuntu alayhim shahidan ma dumtu fihim. Then he says, falamma tawafaytani. You see here, tawafaytani, the word mutawafika in Quran chapter 3 verse 55. It's confirmed on the day of judgment. Jesus is repeating that. And when you caused me to die, when you took my soul away, then he says, Kunta anta rakiba alayhim wa anta ala kulli shayin shaheed. So now Jesus said, I told them just what you, God, commanded me that worship God, my Lord, and your Lord. Then he says, and I was a witness over them as long as I was among them. Who are them? The children of Israel. Yes, he was among them, not among you. He doesn't know you, the imposters of today. He doesn't know you, right? He was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel, right? He wasn't sent to just everybody like that uh, for with, with his message, right? So since he was among the children of Israel, now this is what he says. I told them just what you commanded me, that worship God, my Lord, and your Lord. And he says, and I was a witness over them as long as I was among them. But when you caused me to die, that is you took me away, you became the observer over them. For you are a witness over all things. This is what will transpire on the day of judgment. Verse 118. If you punish them, then indeed they are your servants. This is what Jesus will say. But if you forgive them, then indeed you are the almighty, the wise. So the choice is for God. Nobody has to decide. Quran chapter 18 verse 26. He does not share his, his judgments with anybody. He is the only one who judges. Nobody judges with him. You see, so now this verse is in the contrast of in the contrast of verse chapter three, verse fifty-five, when God took him away and raised him, which is confirmed of also in chapter four, verse one hundred and fifty-eight. He raised him away. Jesus wasn't killed and buried by people. <laughs> no, aha. Uh -huh. So then we go for further. When I take you to Quran chapter 19, verse 15, I'm going to show you something interesting. How, how people twist the verses of God out of context. And then they will say something which God doesn't never said. I take you to Quran chapter 19, verse 15. I'm going to show you something interesting. How both the mainstream Muslims and some Christians are lying to people, saying Jesus will come back. It's a lie. He's never coming back. God has taken his soul away till the day of judgment he's never ever coming back he doesn't know you if he's coming back is he coming as a white man or as a black man where is he coming israel when he was alive there was no country called israel 
<laughs> that Israel you are seeing was only is an Israeli state formed in the year 1948. <laughs> when Jesus was alive, there wasn't a country called Israel. So if you think he is coming to that country called Israel, stop fooling yourselves. <laughs> and when he is coming, does he know you? How can he come back to a people he never knew? <laughs> He's dead and gone. God has taken his soul away. And I'm going to confirm that to you, right? Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 19, right? Chapter 19. And we are going to see from verse 15. I'm going to show you something interesting. How people are too twisting the words of God out of context to put their own narratives. They don't let the context to do the talking. And that is the deviance there, right? So Quran chapter 19, right? In verse 15, God, uh, God was talking about what? John, that is John the Baptist, Yahya. Now, this similar instance was repeated for Jesus. And I'm going to help people to understand. In order to know that he's talking about John the Baptist, start from verse 12, chapter 19, verse 12. It says, Oh, John, take the book with strength, and we gave him judgment as a youth. Sabiya, he was a youth, a young guy giving the book and the judgment. And verse 13, as affection from us and purity, and he was pious. Verse 14, and he was nice to his parents, both parents, father and mother, and he was not tough and rebellious, meaning he's not Jabaron Asiya. Somebody who is rebellious, disobedient, right? Good. And then verse 15, then he says, Wasalamun alayhi yawma wulida. And peace be upon him the day he was born. Do you see? The day he was born, peace be upon him. Right? Then he says, Wa yawma yamutu. And the day he will die. The day he will die. And then he says, Wayoma Yuba Athu Haya. And the day he will be resurrected alive. So we have three instances. He was born, he will die, and he'll be raised alive. This is John the Baptist on the day of judgment. That is the, when God will raise you alive. So he was born, and he will die, and he will be risen alive. So now, what is the difference between him and Jesus? Let's go and see if there's any difference again. When some people twist the verse out of context and lie to you and say, look, this is where he says he will be raised alive. So it means Jesus is being risen alive. Are you lying to yourself? He will only be raised alive on the day of judgment. He's never, ever coming back. Stop lying to yourself. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. so for some of the Muslims, mainstream Muslims who lie to themselves and say, oh, uh, Quran chapter 19, verse 33, this is where Jesus is coming back. You are liars. Stop lying to people. We are going to see the evidence today. Quran chapter 19, verse 33. If you want to understand the context, start from verse 30. Quran chapter 19, verse 30 is talking about Jesus. Inni Abdullahi atani al -kitaba wa ja'alani nabiyya. He, Jesus, said, Indeed, I am a servant of God, not a slave of God. Jesus was not a slave. Muhammad is not a slave. No, actually, we are not even slaves of God. We are servants. There's a difference between saying slave and servant. Indeed, I am a servant of God. He has given me the book and made me a prophet. Right? God gave him a book and made him a prophet. Verse 31. And he, God, has made me blessed wherever I will be and has ordained for me the salat, the litany, and the what? Zakat, the charity. As long as I live. For as long as he lives, he will observe the salat and the zakat. Then verse 32, and to be nice to my parents, just like also Yahya was nice to his both parents. But Jesus unfortunately had one parent, which is his mother. And has not made me tough and squandered. God didn't make him jabbar, a stubborn child and a squandered, shakiya, somebody who is very aggressive. You understand? Then it continues, verse 33, and peace be upon me the day I was born, just like uh, John the Baptist, the day he was born, and the day I will die, which we saw in Quran chapter 3, verse 55, God raised him, took his soul away and raised him, he is dead. And the day I will be resurrected alive. Now compare this verse to chapter 19, verse 15, about John. And bring it back to chapter 19, verse 33, and tell me the difference. 
Peace be upon John, the day he was born, the day he will die, and the day he will be resurrected alive. Three instances. Chapter 19, verse 33. Peace be upon me, that is Jesus, the day I was born, that is one. The day I will die, that is two. And the day I will be resurrected alive, that is three. Tell me what is the difference between him and John. So out of your stupidity, is John coming back? 